Assalamu alaikum. I am Professor Dr. Abzalunus Abinta Lutfer, Head of the Department of Microbiology at the Newman's Medical College. I am today going to discuss uh, about Streptococcus pneumoniae. And Streptococcus pneumoniae, to begin with, I should remind uh, a little bit of classification about uh, Streptococcus because the Streptococcus is a, has a complicated classification, but Streptococcus pneumoniae falls into the category of alpha hemolytic on blood agar plate. So, among alpha hemolytic streptococci, we have two organisms. One is streptococcus pneumonia and the other is very dense group of streptococci. And um, reminding you that these are all aerobic and facultative anaerobes and streptococcus pneumonia also like Neisseria group requires 5 to extra 5 to 10 percent carbon dioxide for its growth. Besides that, we would like to prefer a chocolate agar media to cultivate Streptococcus pneumoniae. So, the um, growth will be initially a dome shaped colony on chocolate agar media and later on there will be a depressed center uh, due to the autolysis of the Streptococcus pneumoniae which is called Rotsman colony. The Streptococcus pneumoniae produces aut some autolytic enzymes that causes this um, um, autolysis of the self um, colony and it starts from the center. So, making the colony a Drotsman type which is very typical and once anyone see it will never be able to forget it. So, we can also use lice blood agar which is being used nowadays and the uh, biochemical um, characteristics of Streptococcus pneumoniae are they are they form in tinolin, they are bile soluble and they are sensitive to optocin. And they have two important antigen, one is called capsular polysaccharide and the other is C, react, C wall carbohydrate on, in the cell wall. Antigenicity of the polysaccharide is very important because they are being classified as 19 serotypes, 19 serotypes depending on in these using capsular polysaccharide. So, when antisera containing all of 90 serotype is available, it is called omnisera. Having all the serotypes together in one sera, it is omnisera. So, antisera containing individual serotype is also available. And we should also rem remember that this streptococcus um, pneumonia um, is a prototype example of um, capsule, capsular type of gram positive cocci. And this capsule, um, which is uh, polysaccharide, is a T independent antigen. So, when, when it produces um, when it produces um, immune response, it will give rise to only immunoglobulin M, not immunoglobulin G, right? So, we have a picture here in a um, um, sample um, uh, showing the streptococcus pneumonia with the capsule. And regarding Omnisera, this streptococcus pneumonia, streptococcus meningitis, bacillus anthracis, haemophilus influenzae, all these type of um, gram, this type of capsulated bacteria will um, cause a reaction when the specific antisera is being used on them um, because they are all capsulated and they have this um, um, polysaccharide capsule and when the antisera is being used on them their capsule will be swollen and this swollen form of capsular reaction is called um, as coiling phenomena. This is an important um, um, uh, reaction which is often asked in the viva examination or it can come as a short note in the return examination. So, antigenicity. Regarding antigenicity, the T substance of the polysaccharide or the capsule is important because you know the serum of a normal individual contains a um, protein which reacts this C substance, right? And the protein is called C reactive protein. Importance of C substance lies in its ability to detect this CRP, which is an acute phase protein, and it is it is being used as a better predictor of heart attack risk than increased level in cholesterol. So, you have to 
give a little attention to the C substance and also to the CRP when it is raised. So, the other determinants of pathogenicity of cluster uh, of uh, streptococcus pneumoniae are starting with capsule of polysaccharide. It has got you know invasiveness because of this polysaccharide. They have lipotechoic acid, they have pneumolysin, also they are immunoglobulin A protease producer, meaning they can protect themselves or evade the immune system in the secretory substance, secretory surface. So, Thing, keeping that in mind, uh, what are the disease they produce? Initially, the one and only important um, uh, disease that septococcal, septococcal pneumonia can produce, always we should think of, is pneumonia. And then we can all, they can also produce meningitis because they have the invasiveness and they, uh, uh, they can uh, evade your immune system in the local area in or the secretory surfaces. So, they can cause, you know, otitis, media, sinusitis, meningitis, pericarditis. They can also go to the joint if they get entry into the blood and travel through and can, they can cause arthritis, uh, conjunctivitis, bacteremia and septicemia. So, out of tiny capsular serotypes, not all of them are virulent equally. So, only 15 causes most infections. In adults type, type 1 to 8 and in children 6, 14, 19 and 23 are causes most infections. Since 40 to 70 percent of human are at some times carrier or uh, carrier of virulent pneumonia, as I have already mentioned, they are uh, they can remain as transient flora or normal flora to some uh, nasopharynx, nasopharynx of some population. So, 40 to 70 percent of human uh, may also carry some virulent form of pneumococci. So, the normal respiratory mucosa causes great natural resistance to the pneumococci, right? They, they should, but among the factors that lower this resistance and predisposing factor on the human host part, using factors are pneumococcal infection. We have to think of the predisposing factor. The predisposing factor is the most important, especially in this uh, corona era. You have to think of. Uh, pneumococcal infection because you know uh, the viral and other respiratory tract infections that damages self cell surface cells are very um, liable to cause post viral streptococcal pneumonia infection right then abnormal accumulation of mucus or in any case case of allergy which protect pneumococci from phagocytosis because mucosa inhibits phagocytic cell to uh, entry and also it has uh, capsule right then bronchial obstruction of some kind like people having atelectasis, respiratory tract injury due to irritants that uh, disturbs the mucociliary function, irritants like acid or alkali, alkali. And, uh, it can um, um, produce um, causes uh, damage to the mucociliary uh, function of the innate immunity and giving rise uh, helps the pneumococcal infection to ensue, right. Then alcohol or intoxication which depresses phagocytic activity and depresses cough reflex and it facilitate, facilitates uh, aspiration of foreign material. Then abnormal circulatory dynamics, pulmonary congestion, heart failure etc. Other conditions has to be remembered also like malnutrition, general uh, ability, sickle cell anemia, hyposplenism, nephrosis, complement deficiency or, or, or uh, extreme age has to be considered. Hmm? So, pneumococcal infection usually occurs in four phases. This is sometimes asked in the clinical part also in medicine. So, they have a four typical phases like phase of congestion, phase of exudation, phase of consolidation and phase of resolution where macro, macrophage actively phagocytose the debris and liquid is absorbed completely. Uh, if the phase of resolution occurs then it is very good um, recovery from um, uh, on part of the patient. What are the clinical features it, it can come up with? 
Number one, the onset will be sudden and uh, patient will have fever, chills, sharp pleural pain. If it uh, goes to the causes pneumonia, there will be sharp pleural pains and uh, bloody rusty sputum is a typical finding of pneumococcal infection. Breathing is rapid and shallow and pulse will be rapid. For diagnosis, you have to collect the sputum, not the saliva, you know. Uh, sometimes people cannot expectorate sputum, then give physiotherapy or ex uh, to expectorate sputum and collect, try to ask the patient or explain the patient how to give um, proper sputum without mixing with the saliva. Sometimes saliva is more than the sputum, then the microbiologist and are at problem, at a fix, we cannot do anything if you cannot provide sputum. So, the sputum is very important. Then in case of meningitis, CSF, joint fluid in case of arthritis, blood in case of bacteremia, septicemia, right. So, we will do a gram stain from the uh, specimen also at the same time very aseptically. We can inoculate into the chocolate agar media, very much aseptic precaution has to be taken because the contamination may occur because chocolate agar media is a very highly enriched media. So, talking of gram staining, we will find these uh, paired gram positive diplococci who, who look like short bacilli because they are lanceolate shape, shape, the lancet shape bacilli paired opposing each other. So, it gives a longer type of um, pair diplococci in spite of um, instead of the rounded shaped diplococci which uh, we seen we have seen in meningococci and gonococci and they also have this capsule so it um, uh, and they also arrange in a chain form so uh, two paired paired arranged paired diplococci arranged in a chain shape uh, look like a um, short bacilli is often confused huh so, you have to look very carefully with the fine adjustment to see the capsule there and then again we will uh, have to figure out uh, using other methods. So, this swelling test can be used to uh, uh, confirm the uh, uh, streptococcus pneumonia because first we use omnisera uh, which contains all the serotypes. So, if it is a streptococcus pneumonia case, the omnisera will cause the capsule to swell up and this is a very um, uh, easy method to recognize them. I have a slide here to show you and this um, uh, Omnisera um, is used to um, uh, also then type specific um, antisera can be used to uh, uh, used to detect the um, special type for epidemiological purpose. And then we can culture also not only chocolate agar we can culture also low floods, blood agar and blood agar media along with carbon dioxide and um, usual time. Uh, so, Craftsman colony will be seen. So, it is easily identified and hemolysis which hemolysis alpha hemolysis or greenish zone around the colony easily can be identified right. So, how you differentiate between streptococcus pneumonia and streptococcus pigeons and streptococcus agalecti, huh? because uh, it is easy that streptococcus pneumonia will produce um, alpha hemolysis and the other two will produce beta hemolysis. Streptococcus pneumonia will uh, have a capsular hollow around the paired cocci, they will have only single or in they will be in single or pair or um, in chain form only. And the colony will be Drotsman. I have a very clear picture of Drotsman colony um, depression at the center, very nice picture here. And they will have, you know, um, a smooth, oval, oval, uh, smooth rounded colony, right. So, um, then um, we can also use the biochemical fermentation test using uh, inulin, which will be fermented if you, you if we util, use. A uh, drop of in inulin in a test tube and uh, mix a um, small uh, colony of Streptococcus pneumonia and uh, incubate for a time. The in inulin will be fermented. Then we can use bile salt in a mixture of um, in a suspension of Streptococcus pneumonia colony. Then the bile will be bile salt will be dissolved uh, and uh, we can also use. A chemical agent called optocin in a disc in a plate 
containing pneumony uh, organism, it will be so, uh, seen as sensitive. So, these inulin fermentation, optocin sensitivity and bile solubility will also differentiate this streptococcus pneumony from the other alpha hemolytic streptococci or viridans group of streptococci. All right. So, what we have here, we can also do the seroagglutination, which will agglutinate first with omnisera and later then particular type specific antisera for the epidemiological, uh, epidemiological purpose or for research purpose, because otherwise for clinical purpose, we do not really need to know the type specific. We can only, we only want to know whether it is streptococcus pneumonia or not. Okay. Then detection of antibody antigen in the fluid by lattice agglutination and also co-agglutination test can be done at the uh, bedside in case in bedside co-agglutination test can be done to identify the streptococcal pneumonia meningitis. Hmm. So, treatment is uh, penicillin G is the drug of choice, they are very sensitive usually and other drugs uh, tetra, uh, can be used um, uh, like uh, erythromycin and tetracycline, uh, but um, very uh, recently drug resistance has been uh, come up uh, with resistance to penicillin, tetracycline, erythromycin and cefotriaxone uh, uh, and that is why um, uh, sensitivity should be done and uh, vaccine is also available nowadays there are two types of vaccine one is polyvalent polysaccharide vaccine usually 23 type and there is also coupled conjugated vaccine so what is the difference between you know since you have, you know about immunology you can easily um, understand this this simple polyvalent polysaccharide vaccine will uh, will not be very much efficient because it is it has got only polysaccharide and it will produce immunoglobulin m since it is anti independent antigen but in case of conjugate vaccine which is being conjugated with the poly polysaccharide capsule with the diphtheria toxin, diphtheria toxin protein has been added. So, that this vaccine is um, uh, has become more potent and um, gives you um, better immunity. Okay? So, the difference between virulent uh, group and pneumonia you already know. Uh, I have already mentioned that other than uh, viridans will be dome shaped uh, colony, it will be Drotsman colony after one day and they uh, looks like spherical or avoid in chains, but they will be like short type of lanceolate diplococca in chains. So, the um, uh, biochemical also you have um, um, you have heard from me just a um, few seconds ago. So, I will be finishing here today with Streptococcus pneumonia. Thank you very much for hearing me out. Uh, stay safe and um, healthy and happy. Um, see you tomorrow, inshallah, Allah Hafiz.